HR issues can kill you. One complaint against your company can turn your world upside down. And you spend way too much time dealing with HR when you should be spending your time on making a profit. You should talk to Bambi. With Bambi, get access to your own dedicated U.S.-based HR manager starting at just $99 per month. They get to know you and your business while providing HR expertise and the personal touch you need and want. They're available by phone, email, and real-time chat, so onboarding and terminations run smoothly. Team members reach peak performance, and your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations. And with Bambi's HR Autopilot, you'll automate important HR practices like setting policies, training, and feedback. HR managers can easily cost 80 grand a year, but Bambi starts at $99 per month. Schedule your free conversation today to see how much Bambi can take off your plate. Go to Bambi.com right now and type in Accelerate under podcast when you sign up. It'll really help the show. Spelled BAM, B-E-E dot com. Bambi.com. Type in Accelerate. Me, 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 but also you. <laughs> the Pharaoh fast forwards his favorite foreign film. Powder donut. <clears throat> Okay, what's my line? Uh, the only line I see here on the script is get options based on your budget with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. Oh man, that's a tongue twister, huh? I'm sorry, I'm gonna need a few more minutes. <clears throat> bulbous Walrus, the Bulbous Walrus. The Name Your Price tool, only from Progressive. The owl ran afoul of the comatose Coxswain. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates price and coverage match limited by state law. Welcome to Accelerate Your Business Growth with your host, Diane Helbig. Diane is a leading small business development and leadership coach, author, and speaker who is passionate about sharing valuable ideas, tips, and techniques with business professionals worldwide. Diane brings you the world's experts and gurus in all things business, whether it's sales, structure, social media, planning, or plateauing, guests bring their expertise and energy to each episode. When growing your business is your focus, Accelerate Your Business Growth is the show to listen to. Got a topic or guest suggestion? Let Diane know. The goal is to make sure you have the information you need to move your business forward. Thanks for joining us. Settle in and enjoy. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. Today's podcast is sponsored by Audible.com. Go to audibletrial.com slash business growth and you can pick up a free trial of audible.com where you can explore not only the audiobooks but all of the content that they have there. Uh, it's a fun adventure and I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. The Accelerate Your Business Growth podcast continues to gain recognition as a great resource for small business owners, sales professionals, business leaders uh, of all sorts. And that is because of the guests. These are folks who have expertise in particular areas of business, and they join me for a conversation where they share that expertise with all of you. Today is no different. My guest today is Brian Margolis. Brian is a former environmental scientist turned entrepreneur and author of the Index Card Business Plan. His clients range from individual sales reps to Shark Tank entrepreneurs and Fortune 500 companies. His system to help entrepreneurs, sales professionals, and other results-based professionals run a simple, more lucrative business has helped create seven-figure earners and is licensed by some of the largest companies in the world to train their teams. Thanks so much for joining me today, Brian. Uh, thanks for having me, Diane. I am thrilled to have you here. Um, I know that you're a big believer that most professionals operate without a strategy, and I'm wondering if you would elaborate on that, please. Yeah, I, I think... The experience that I have, not not personally, obviously it was this way personally, but as, as I've worked with so many people now over the years is 
that there's a lot of professionals out there who we can grind our way to a certain level of success when we kind of combine, you know, we combine our skills and our talents. We're good at what we do. We kind of combine that with our work ethic. And, you know, even flying by the seat of our pants, we can achieve a certain level of success. Yeah. But I still think even those people are operating without a strategy, meaning at a certain point, you hit a plateau where just working more hours or doing more of whatever got you there, sending 500 emails instead of 200 emails or whatever it is, it just, you realize that's not doing anything. And, you know, when, when I help these people, it's usually because they don't have a strategy. And, and let me be specific what I mean about a strategy, meaning they haven't figured out in advance, they haven't done the work in advance to figure out where they get the biggest return on investment for their time, right? And their mental energy. And so that's what I mean by a strategy, meaning you are very intentional about where your focus is so you can get the biggest bang for your buck. Yeah, boy, I get that. And, and I agree with you. I, I, it's so interesting that they, <clears throat> it's like they hit the ground running and they just keep running. And then one day they stop and go, okay, hang on a second. Where am I going? The analogy I like to use is like, you know, you have, you think of a fly, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, flies are good at flying. We literally mm -hmm. call them the fly, right? <laughs> Yeah. You know, they're fast, they're nimble. I don't think anyone doubts that they're good at what they do and their work ethic is, is uncanny, but you know, one fly winds up dead on the windowsill despite its talent and its work ethic. And another fly just turns its body slightly, right? Changes its focus of where it applies that talent and skill and it flies right out the door. And so <laughs> what you learn from these flies and, and what you learn, you know, over time is that being good at something and being successful are two different things. Huh. And again, you can be good at your trade. You can be good at what you do. And again, kind of grind your way to that certain level of success. But if you want to go next level, you need a strategy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I get that. And so you, you've got this pillar system and you say it's based on the concept of focus management. So what, you know, explain what focus management is, please. So when I talk about return on investment, you know, for your output, right? Most people think in terms of hours and time. Mm -hmm. and, and here's the truth. On any given day, and everybody listening, including yourself, know this, on any given day, you're going to run out of mental energy. You're going to run out of your ability to focus on cognitively demanding activities long before you run out of hours in the day. And so what that means is your limiting resource isn't time. It's not hours. It's that mental energy. It's that focus, yeah. right? And so when I talk about focus management instead of time management, what I'm saying is, you need the biggest ROI for that resource. If you're going to give your mental energy, your focus to something, you need to get a big return on it. And so the focus management thing basically says, I want a strategy that produces results, right? The time management model is more of, you know, I want to fill every hour of every day, have yeah. a nice looking calendar, and I want a strategy to get everything done. And the people that are listening to this, they're not getting paid to get everything done. Right. They're getting paid for results. And so that's, that's what the system that, that I use, that I teach, it's more about worrying about your focus as the limiting resource, not hours in the day. Boy, that's fascinating. That makes so much sense to me that, you know, what I say to people is you can't manage time, time is, you know, time happens. It's, it's really a constant, but you can manage your decisions around right. how you spend that time, right? So I'd like this idea of focus management and, and deciding what it is you're going to focus on because um, that feels like it's easier to actually then accomplish things. Well, I, I think you give yourself more wiggle room too. In other words, 
again, I, I, I know I said it, but so many people, their definition of a good day or a successful day is, I worked a lot of hours, I crossed yeah. a lot of things off, right? My calendar was full, I, I really got after it today. And I think the reality is, even though sometimes it feels good to mark 15 things off your to-do list, sometimes crossing off one, right, is, yeah. is, is more important than those 15. And so, yeah. again, you know, it's this, it's this recognition of what you already know that, look, there, despite everyone thinking they're Superman sometimes, we're just not productive eight hours a day. We're not productive 10 hours a day. Now, I'm not saying there's not things you can't do in that time. There are low mental energy tasks that you can do. Mm -hmm. You can certainly be reactive. You can certainly talk to people. But I'm talking about the mental energy to be proactive, right? To, to, to focus on yeah. something proactively that needs to get done that doesn't have a consequence, right? Well, and I think a lot of people will say, because I hear a lot of people say, I show up with the best of intentions. And then at the end of the day, I look back and say, wow, I was so busy. I don't think I got anything done. Yeah, it's funny. You know, I, I work a lot on my copywriting because, you know, one, you know, as you know, one of the important things about business is not just having a good product or service or being helpful for people. It's letting other people know you're helpful, <laughs> you know, that you have something of value, right? And right. One of the things that I used a while back that caught a lot of people was I said, your days start off with good intentions, but, and that was like, that caught a lot of people, right? <laughs> and, and that's, I go back to the word I used a little earlier, which is intentional. Yeah. Okay. Inten you know, one of the open secrets of success, I mean, there are secrets of success. The thing is nobody's hiding them. They're right out in front of us, right? <laughs> one of the open secrets of success is planning your day and working your plan. Yeah. And although you, most people have actually heard this before, I, I, I feel pretty confident that nine out of 10 people listening don't actually plan their day and then work their plan. They yeah. tend to start off with some kind of soft plan and then they react all day. They're reactive. Yeah, definitely. I, I absolutely believe that that is true. Okay, so what is, what is this, uh, the Friday night feeling? <laughs> the, the, it, it, look, it's really cool helping people make money, right? I, I love, you know, I, I think anyone in, in our profession loves seeing success, so to speak. But the funny part is more people tell me about the Friday night feeling as a benefit of simplification in the pillar system than they do about the money or, or the increase in salary, the sales or whatever it is. And so what the Friday night feeling is, is so, so you mentioned earlier the pillar system. Mm -hmm. And all the pillar system does, it's, it's just a process that boils everything you could be doing with your time, right? And let's, let's be honest, there's no shortage of things you could be doing with your time. You'd be writing a list for it, <laughs> right? Definitely, yeah. And what it does, is it runs it through a process. And what comes out the other side are these pillars, these, these weekly activities which, and, and this is the key, they're 100% in your control whether they get done. These are not goals. These are actual activities. And the way the system is set up is that as long as you complete those five, six, seven activities, right, depending on how many pillars you actually wind up with, everything else takes care of itself. And you know on Friday night, and this is the key, regardless of that week's results, you know on Friday night that you're done. You did what you needed to do that week and your business is moving in the right direction. It's just a matter of time and pressure. And I think for people like us, results-based professionals, no one actually ever tells us the day is over, the week is over, because there's always stuff we could be doing. Right. So the, the Friday night feeling is knowing that you did what you had to do. Got it. Boy, I can almost feel that. <laughs> well, well, I mean, do you, do, you, do you remember, you know, the Flintstones, right? The, the yeah. Flintstones and, and, and Fred would be working on the dinosaur at the quarry and 
the bird would squawk. And that meant, yeah. you know, his shift was over. He slid down the dinosaur tail and, you know, he went home to Wilma. Yeah. But, you know, people like us, sales pros, entrepreneurs, results professionals, we don't get that squawking bird. Nobody nope. tells us we're done. And so I think this is a healthy way of doing it, saying, look, yeah. I did, regardless of all the little things, and I did what I needed to do this week. It was a good week. Because here's the reality. If you measure your week based on lag indicators, you know, new clients, sales, you know, just depending on, on what business you're in, mm -hmm. it's very misleading. I mean, you can do all the right things and the clients, the accounts, the sales, the whatever, just don't land because, you know, there's a cycle, there's a, there's a time lag. Yeah. You can do all the wrong things and sign up two huge accounts in one week because <laughs> it just landed. And so when you reflect back on the week, you're like, oh, I had a good week or I had a bad week. And, and that's an unhealthy way to look at it because beside riding the emotional roller coaster, which is that's what that does, right? And yeah. you wind up changing directions every time you have a bad week. Um, you know, the reality is sometimes you are doing the right things and you don't need to change directions. In other weeks, you, maybe you aren't doing the right things and you should change directions. So it's just a, it's a different way of looking at your business, focusing more on the process, on the lead indicators, not just the lag indicators. Got it. Wow. Thanks for that. That, that is really fascinating and uh, has just, you know, so much impact to it. I'm going to take a quick sponsor break and then I want to continue. The Accelerate Your Business Growth podcast is happy to be sponsored by Audible.com. And while Audible.com, it, you know, has thousands of audiobook titles, they also have things like Audible Originals and podcasts, and guided meditations, and so much more. And the cool thing is that you can get to all of that content in one place. You don't have to go to one place for audiobooks and then someplace else for guided meditations. It's just got this great, incredible library of content for you to enjoy. So we are offering you a free trial. If you go to audibletrial.com slash businessgrowth, you can sign up for that trial and explore on your own. Find the things that resonate with you and favorite, you know, the things that you like and just enjoy. Today we're speaking with Brian Margolis about simplifying your strategy so you can maximize your results. Okay, so I'm loving this concept. And, and the, you know, as you're talking about all these different things, I, I keep going back to that, um, you know, this focus management because I, I get it. You know, as you talk about this, I get it. And it really is so simplified that it, it doesn't have to be this big complicated, um, you know, plan and strategy and, and, all of this nonsense, it's, it really is relatively basic, right? Figure out what it is you need to get done in order to feel yeah. like you've gotten everything done on Friday and hold to that. Yeah. I mean, I mean, here's, here's how most people operate. Most people, they, they're, you know, maybe I'll set it up this way. Okay. A lot of us grew up in a generation, including myself, where hard work was emphasized, right? It was a values yeah. thing. It was a morals thing. People yeah. wore with a badge of honor how late they worked or how busy they were. Right. And so for all of us, not all of us, but for a lot of us, including myself, even to this day sometimes, it's hard to do what Richard Koch, the billionaire says, which is, disassociate effort from reward, right? Yeah. Really, we're, we're not in the industrial age. You're not putting together widgets. We're, a lot of us aren't in industries where just hours equals output. And so it's hard for some of us to realize and accept that, you know, just a few key things are the most important things that, that get us most of the results. And so what I find with my clients is this. And when I say my clients, you can throw me right in there because this is something I developed for myself long before I decided to help other people with it. I mean, I, I thought I was all over the place. Um, but, you know, the, the way 
I, I guess the way to couch it is that, look, if, if you start your day, okay, if you start your day and you start working, all right, and you do this and you do this and you do that, you're going, no matter what, no matter what, you are going to hit that wall, okay? You're going, you're going to hit that wall. You're going to get to the point where you're just not as effective, okay? <sighs> And if in, and maybe this is really the point, if in the heat of the moment, when you're in the trenches working, when you have to make a decision, you're going to decide poorly. And here's what I mean. Hmm. We've all heard of 80-20, productivity yeah. over activity, the vital few, work on your business, not in your business, right? Yeah. You know, th these are all things, and, and most of us logically believe in them. Yes. But in the trenches... When you have to make decisions, you can throw those, those success principles out the window because what's going what's gonna to push us is the urgency of something, how much we feel it's urgent, and what we feel like doing, right? What we feel like doing. And so if you're going to decide to use success principles or apply them to your business, once you're executing on your day, it's too late at that point. And so what we do with the pillar system and what I would suggest your listeners do with any strategy, you know, pillar system is not the only way to figure out the right things to do. There's a lot of great strategies out there. You have to make sure the success principles are already baked in. They have to be baked into the things you choose to work on, if that makes sense, ahead of time. So if you think about it this way, the CEO, Diane, of a company gets paid the most, right? Yes. And some people think that's not fair. Yes. You know, I'm the one with the skills. I'm the one doing the work. I, you know, without me, this, you know, all that kind of stuff. The reason a CEO is so highly valued is because the CEO is the one who makes the decisions, right? On where to put forth resources, where okay. to put the human resource, the effort, the money, all that stuff, where to put it to get the best results, right? And so to an organization, that is actually the most valuable thing. Mm. Not what is being done, but what it is being focused on. And so if you think about your own business, you're, for most people listening here, you're probably close to being the CEO and the person who has to execute on it, right? Right. <laughs> and so you, you've got to separate those two people. And you've got to say, okay, when I'm the CEO, I'm going to be clear. I'm going to use a process and I'm going to be clear on where my efforts are best spent. You got to make those decisions intelligently. Then when you're in the trenches, when you're actually executing on that plan, that is not a time to question the CEO. You've got to trust the CEO, I say, so to speak, meaning oh. yeah, it feels like I should be doing this or this is screaming at me. But I already determined, the CEO determined, this is the best place to spend my time. Does that make sense? It does make sense. And, and you yeah. have to learn to trust the CEO when you, yeah. when you do this right, the CEO of your business. Yeah. So, well, I like this about the success principles have to be baked in. And, it, and so it feels like it would be easier to trust the CEO if, the time that I spent being the CEO, I was strategic and I had, you know, really mapped something out so that when I was the person who was doing the delivery, I didn't have to think about it at all. I just had to follow it. Yeah. Huh. And, and you know, and, and for me, again, that's what the pillar system does. It, it figures out what those activities are. But again, even without something like the pillar system, most people, if they sat down, could figure out where they get the biggest return on investment. Yeah. So, so, so I'll, I'll, give, I'll give you an example. Your sponsor, right. your sponsor is Audible, right? Yes. Okay. Well, let's use Audible. Okay. A lot of people, they, a lot of people who are successful, who are try, and trying to get better, they like to learn, right? Yeah. They're, they read books on marketing and sales and business and entrepreneurships. They listen to podcasts, the audio books, the, the whatever, right? And so, you know, we call that kind of sharpening the ax, right? You should yeah. always be learning and getting better. Right. And that's great. And I think you should be doing that in your spare time, right? In, in your, that, that just kind of general knowledge in your, in your leisure time, if you will. Okay. Right. Yeah. 
But here, here's where a lot of people, I, I change it up on them. If you're going to take the time to learn something, to get better at a skill, okay, to get better at a skill, you can't just say, oh, I'm just going to read about this or, or learn about that. You've got to decide in advance, and I call these learning pillars. Okay. You've got to decide in advance, if I'm going to spend two hours a week getting better at something or an hour or 90 minutes or whatever it is, what should I get better at? What is, what is actually going to give me the biggest ROI? Sometimes maybe you're a seven in a certain skill, but going from a seven to an eight or a seven to a nine, maybe the return on investment isn't that high. Whereas in another skill, you know, getting a little better at it could be a big return on investment. For example, I know, I know you have a lot of sales professionals who listen to this, right? Yes. And a lot of them prospect using email, right? They <sighs> identify their, their qualified person and they write an email. Yeah. And I'm, I'm amazed. Well, I'm not amazed anymore. I used to be amazed. But how many sales professionals have never even begun to learn direct response copywriting? to even learn the most basic skills of how do you write an email that gets responded to. Uh -huh. Now, I'm not asking them to be a world-class direct response copywriter, because if they yeah. were, they'd be making crazy money, right? Yeah. They're about the most valuable people on the planet. But what I've noticed with some of my clients is you can go from a zero or never even heard of direct response copywriting, right? Yeah. To a two or a three, and the return on investment is huge. Because now you're actually getting responses to your email. They're not actually right. just getting deleted. Whereas that, that same person, if they spent 90 minutes a week working on their presentation skills, maybe they're already pretty good. Maybe going from a seven to an eight or an eight to a nine is nice, but doesn't have the ROI of the direct response copywriting. Does that make sense? Oh my gosh, that's a great example. Yeah, and, and so this is the idea of figure out in advance your biggest ROI. And that's, you know, so to me, the most important part of a learning pillar is actually choosing what you should learn, right? For me, learning yeah. website coding might help me if I get into a pickle, but it certainly is not the biggest return on investment for what I do. Right. Yeah. It's a hard thing to, to learn. And, and I think for a couple of reasons, one um, is because I think people believe they can get something done quicker and, and more cost effectively. And it's that bright, shiny object thing, you know, that, that as entrepreneurs were distracted easily with things that look interesting. Yeah. Uh, look, I think people in general are distracted easily. Um, yeah. You know, that is not a shortcoming, by the way. That's normal. Uh, I, I, I used to think it was a shortcoming. When, when yeah. I developed the pillar, I didn't call it the pillar system back then, but when I, when I developed this, because I've been an entrepreneur now for over two decades, and I developed this system for me. Because of my background <laughs> as a scientist, I always thought, well, you know, I, I'm behind the curve. I've never learned sales. I've never learned marketing. I've never learned this. I've never learned that. So I need this stupid, simple system, right? Where I figure out in advance and, and then I just execute on that. Yeah. I thought that was me. I thought I was the one who was messing <laughs> around all day being reactive. Turns out that's pretty much everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I would say eight out of 10 of my clients at some point in our relationship will tell me they have, they think they have ADD, but they right. don't know. Right, right. Yeah. And I'm sure there's real people who have it. I'm not a medical uh -huh. doctor, but I tell most of them, no, your diagnosis is you're human. Yeah. Right. We, we are reactive by nature. I don't know how well you would have done against the saber tooth tiger. If you were able to sit there and focus and, and, and not know what's going on in your surroundings, right? yeah, not constantly kind of looking funny. up and glancing. Yeah. And so again, I think it's normal. It's not a shortcoming, mm. but you can get better at it. And that's really um, one of the things I'm picking up. And I love systems and process. So for me, this just makes so much sense that, okay, if I, if, if I can simplify my strategy, if I can have a system that uh, tells me where I should be focusing, you know, what I should be focusing on, and, and I decide what the things are that I want to accomplish, then 
it's easy for me to push the other things out when they creep in for the moment. Maybe because I figure, well, then I will have time to explore later. Yeah, and the key to look, the key to a system like this, there, there, there's kind of two parts to it, right? First, you have to identify what the right things are. Yeah. Okay, that's critical. Yeah. But then the second part is you have to you have to learn how to actually execute on them consistently. What I would call a super habit, meaning, you know, I always tell my clients, look, I don't need you to create a whole bunch of new habits. I need you to create one super habit. The only habit I want you to create is pillar execution. You execute on your pillars consistently. And if you can, we can develop that one habit, no matter what winds up being in your pillars, whether it's three workouts a week or this or that, it's going to get done because that open loop in your head has to be closed. Right now yeah. having, cause you know, developing a new habit is not easy. So if you're no. going to do it, let's just develop one, not 14 different ones. Right. Yeah. Well, part of hitting your pillars consistently so you can create that habit. And, and part of the system is you need a place to get things out of your head. Mm. When those shiny objects jump into your head, you need a place that you can either write them down, record them, get them out of your head. That's critical to a system like this. Yeah. And then you can address them later because look, we're all going to have those things pop into our head. We're all going to have those things pop into our head. You just have to be able to get them out of your head quickly and get back to what you're doing. Got it. All right. So can you give us some examples of pillars that like sales professionals and entrepreneurs have actually established? Oh yeah. Where do I start? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Anywhere you want. <laughs> it, you know, obviously it's custom to each person. Yeah. Um, but I'll say, for example, we talked about the learning pillar, right? That's, that's a common one. Yeah. Is that they establish a, a learning pillar. Well, let's just use prospecting, for example. Great. Okay. Look, if you're, if you're having trouble prospecting, if you're having trouble generating leads, talking to qualified people as a sales professional or, or an entrepreneur or whatever, like anything in your business, if you're having trouble, you're either not doing something consistently or you're not doing it effectively or both sometimes, right? Yeah. So sometimes you're good at prospecting. You know how to prospect. You just need to do it consistently. So you might put in a prospecting pillar. A prospecting pillar could look like, you know, reach out to 30 qualified, you know, qualified prospects a week. Okay. It could yeah. be prospect for 90 minutes a week. It could be schedule, you know, it, if it's a predictable result, it could be scheduled 10 meetings a week, right? As long as that's a predictable result because this stuff's right. in control. Right. That's more the consistency side of it. And then you can put criteria around it, right? Okay. And then on the effectiveness side of it, you might also, and you could do both or either or of these pillars, you might have a pillar that says spend 30 minutes a week learning about prospecting. Oh. Go, like I know you, you interviewed, you know, our, our, our mutual contact, your mutual friend, Stu, who's great at prospecting. Right. Right. That's what he teaches people how to get meetings. Yeah. And Stu's awesome, but there's no shortage of people and, and experts out there on how to prospect. So if you're having trouble prospecting, spending 30 minutes a week learning all the different techniques out there, week in and week out, that's pretty critical. Because if all you're doing is sending 10,000 emails and you're not good at what you're doing, there's no value, you're not prospecting well, all you're doing is multiplying by zero. Right. And so again, you have this consistency type of pillar and you have this effectiveness type of pillar, right? Asking for a certain number of referrals every week is a common pillar. Hmm. Right. Yeah. Things like that. And, the, and they're not huge. I mean, I really like this because no. they're, they're so doable. Yes. Yeah. They're, it's it, people. I'm always fascinated by the simplicity of what we do, but, and, and it looks simple. Like it, when you finally figure out what your pillars are, it looks so simple but then when you start trying to hit them consistently, you realize there's no way I was doing this week in and week out. 
there's no way because I'm having trouble doing it and I'm being intentional. Yeah. About it, right? yeah. <laughs> but, but, you know, I, I would challenge anyone on this call, if you're having trouble, you know, prospecting, generating new leads, whatever it is, uh, I challenge you to look back at this entire year and say, how many hours did you actually dedicate yeah. to getting better at prospecting? Because the return, look, the return on investment for that is huge, yep. right? You can't learn about prospecting 30 minutes or an hour a week, week in and week out and not get really, really good at it. Yeah. But I think sometimes people think learning's not work, right? If I'm not sending an email or making a call or checking email or having a meeting or following up, then I'm not working. All that stuff about learning, prospecting, getting better, that's nice when I have time. <laughs> and I would challenge that, no, I don't think there's anything more important than getting better at that. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. I, it's so funny when you were talking about prospecting and people saying, you know, I'm not good at it, whatever. <clears throat> think about how much time you spend on it. I think one of the things people do is they, it's like any habit, right? You start, you're all gung ho. And then it, it, it drops off suddenly. I think with prospecting, I think what happens to a lot of people is it works so well that they get busy. And so they either think they don't need to keep prospecting or they don't want to keep prospecting because they don't think they would be able to handle the volume or they just are so busy that they just like forget. Yeah. They go into that boom and bust cycle. They prospect, yeah. they get activity going now they're so busy handling prospects and customers and all that kind of stuff. They spin themselves right into a desert. Yep. They, they look up and all of a sudden they're like, oh no, now I got to start up again. Right. If, if you can, here, here's what I always say about prospecting. And I don't know if we're too far off topic here, but yeah. you know, the, in my opinion, the reason you, you prospect is to raise your prices, right? You should always be prospecting. You should always be filling your pipeline. You know, Grant Cardone, and I don't know if he's the originator of this, but he talks about, you know, filling your pipeline so full that it throws back up on you, right? Yeah. I get accused sometimes, it's pretty funny, like I'll be booked out for a few months or something, and then people say, yeah, but I still see you promoting this and that, and I go, I'm always prospecting. Yeah. I'm always prospecting. I, I want to keep that pipeline full. I want the demand to be high. Right. Right. And, yeah. and without pillars, I wouldn't do that because when I'm busy, the last thing my brain thinks I should be doing is prospecting. Exactly. But, and here's the key, because I've developed the habit of pillar execution, because that is a, a loop that has to be closed in my head every week. It's an itch that has to be scratched. I no longer associate it with the results. I just, that's what I do. I hit my pillars. I naturally prospect every week. I, it's just what I do. Yeah. I don't feel right if it doesn't get crossed off. Interesting. So, wow. Okay. That's really interesting. This is a, this is really such an interesting subject because it's so, um, I was going to say simple, but I'm, I'm not going to, I'm going to say simplified that uh, it, it, feels like it should be easy to execute. We were just talking about how it really isn't because once you start doing it, you realize that sticking to it is uh, what it really comes down to. But well, also, I mean, I, look, I, simplify, the, the, simplicity is not easy, but it's worth it, I guess, is the way to look at it. Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. Like, like when you think about a light switch, okay? A light switch yeah. is easy. You turn it off yeah. and on, right? Yeah. That's simple. So you like it, but it takes, it took a lot of engineering and figuring out to get it to that point. Right. Yeah. And so like I'm sitting there with a client. I remember this one time we're on like a panel and one of my clients is on there and everyone in the audience already knew that, you know, he was a really, really big producer and all kinds of stuff. And they're asking him about his plan and this and that. And you know, what's, he literally pulls out his index card. He pulls it out of his suit pocket. And he like unfolds it. And he's like, this is my strategy. This, I just do this every week. <laughs> now, for me and him to get to that index card, it took that process. We had to think about it, ask the questions, the pillar system, all that stuff. But again, it's worth it is what I say, 
right? It's yeah. worth it in the end to figure those things out. So talk to me some about this index card um, <laughs> concept, because when you said that about this guy, you know, pulled this index card out, it reminded me of someone way back in my early career. Um, I worked for a company, a um, company that, that um, did like data processing and they had all of these old computer punch cards hanging around for some reason. And one of the owners used to walk around with com a computer punch card in his pocket and he would write himself reminders. He'd write himself notes on that thing. <laughs> and it, it just reminded me of that. I mean, I, it was years ago. I haven't really thought about it, yeah. but uh, you know, um, well, I, look, I use, I use, I personally use an index card and, and so do a lot of my clients. Um, you know, some people listening to this, if they're younger, they might be trying to figure out where you download an index card yeah. from, but you know, a, other, other of us, we, we know what an index card is yeah. and look, I use it, you know, as an old coach of mine used to say, low tech, high check, right? Yeah. But look, you can keep your pillars electronically. You can keep them in your apps, you, you know, whatever you, whatever you need to do. Yeah. But, the idea of the index card is to, is to stay focused and, say, and have that out in front of you and go, look, in the end this week, when I'm being proactive, when I'm being intentional, when I have time to do things, this is what I have to do. And a lot of people naturally like to finish a list, right? Yeah. They can visually see it in front of them. They like to cross things off. And so that's what, you know, the pillars that I talk about they're literally written on an index card. And the idea again is as long as you hit those four, five, six, seven, eight things, whatever it is for you, you had a great week. You can have the Friday night feeling. Now, I want to be clear. That doesn't mean there's not other things you, you don't do during the week, right? Yeah. But most of those things are already handled because they're what I call, based on Stephen Covey, urgent and significant, meaning they're important, but because there's an immediate consequence to not doing them, like showing up for a meeting or getting something in to finish a sale, we naturally do those things. Yeah. Right. When there's an immediate consequence, we handle it. That's what we do. It's the stuff that doesn't have an immediate yeah. consequence. Look, your paycheck's not going to change this week if you don't prospect, if you don't get asked for referrals, if you don't do those things that might be pillars of yours. And that's why those are the things that have to become pillars, right? Yeah. Because there's yeah, no yeah. immediate consequence. You know, I always, I always oh. joke around and I say, look, you know, whatever you're thinking about having for lunch today, if, you, if it's healthy, don't bother. Go get a triple cheeseburger. Because I promise you, whether you eat a triple cheeseburger or you eat a kale salad, you will not look any different in the mirror tonight, right? <laughs> and if you're thinking about working out later, don't even bother. <laughs> Because you won't notice a difference, not today, not tomorrow. Yeah. And so when you have these things that are critical to us, right? I mean, let's be honest, your eating habits, your workout habits, the compounding effect of that is your current health, Yeah. right? But we're horrible as human beings on things that don't have an immediate consequence, which is why it's so easy to make those bad decisions yeah. to not work out. And it's same in your business. There's these things that are critical to our business but there's not an immediate consequence. And so if you're not intentional, whether you're using the pillar system or, or something else like it, of really boiling your business down to those things, you're not gonna do them. Boy, no kidding. I really like that. If there isn't an immediate consequence, you have to be intentional about doing that. Well, think about anything that is wrong with someone's business. It's always in what I call the, the proactive significant or the pro category, right? Again, yeah. This is based on, I forget if it was the, uh, uh, it was the Eisenhower box and then it was Covey's quadrants and, you know, this stuff's been around. Yeah. I just kind of simplified it down to three categories. Um, but, you know, that's where everyone's problem lies. I don't have anyone calling me saying, Brian, here's my problem. I book these amazing meetings or I get these big potential clients or whatever it is. And then by the time three o'clock shows up, you know, I had a full lunch, I'm tired, I'm sleepy. And so I just don't bother showing up. Right. Like yeah. I don't, 
no one tells me they have that problem because there's a consequence. They do it. It's yeah. the stuff that doesn't have the consequence. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. This is so interesting. I, I really appreciate you coming on and spending this time with me. I, I, it, it um, is so clear. It makes so much sense. And I can see how valuable this thought process, this mindset can be for anyone in, in sales or, you know, as a business owner to you know, sort of stay on the, stay on course. Uh, so thank you for that. Will you let the listeners know how they can find you please in your book and everything yeah, else? You're I, 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 I'll keep it simple. Like I like to, right? <laughs> just, don't have to give a million handles and stuff. Just if you go to productivitygiant.com, uh, you can grab a free copy of my book and you can get all my other resources there. Productivitygiant.com. Oh my gosh. That is so great. And uh, your so dogs are excited you. about it. Oh my goodness gracious, the dog can't wait. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I love the world like we live in. Pardon me? I absolutely love the world we live in right now. Everyone's, oh so, my gosh. everyone's so much more human. I know, I know. It is so great. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, and listeners, thank you. Uh, this was a great one. You, you gotta go and, and, get the book and, you know, get connected to Brian, because this is something that can be a game changer in your business on a good, you know, in a good way. I'd also like to thank our sponsor, audible.com. Head on over to audibletrial.com slash business growth and get the free trial and then go exploring. Do that, of course, after Friday night, you know, once you've gotten <laughs> everything else done that you need to do in your business so you can feel really good. And then you can go play. As always, continue to prosper and be curious. And until we meet again on another episode of Accelerate Your Business Growth, goodbye and good day. Me, 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 but also you. <laughs> the Pharaoh fast forwards his favorite foreign film, P -p 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 Powder Donut. <clears throat> Okay, what's my line? Uh, the only line I see here on the script is get options based on your budget with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. Oh man, that's a tongue twister, huh? I'm sorry, I'm gonna need a few more minutes. <clears throat> bulbous Walrus, the Bulbous Walrus. The Name Your Price tool, only from Progressive. The owl ran afoul of the comatose Coxswain. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates Price and Coverage Match Limited by State Law. Introducing Touch-Free Payments from PayPal, a safe way for your customers to pay. Simply download the PayPal app and display your own unique QR code for your customers to scan. Whether you're a market seller, I'll take two tomatoes and a poodle pamperer, <laughs> piano tuner, or plumber, signing up to accept touch-free payments for your business is easy. Touch-free QR code payments. Shop safe with PayPal. Are you tired of seeing your teen or young adult Struggle on a path that clearly isn't the right fit? Is your teenager confused about which direction to take after high school? The future of work is changing rapidly, and our kids need to know all of the options available after high school so they're empowered to make the choice that is best for them. In each episode, we explore the latest trends that are shaping the opportunities of today and tomorrow. I'm your host, Betsy Jewell, and this is the High School Hamster Wheel Podcast.